bloggers pow So, in something completely different, I'm going to be looking at four games that were featured in the Eagle comic strip, The Computer Warrior, from the 1980s. Joining me today is Sergeant Goat. Hello. This was his idea. Uh oh. <laughs> so, I found a lot of the old Eagle comics um, in a stash in my mum's loft and took a few pictures of some of the pages of some of the games they covered. The idea was there was a character called Bobby Patterson who um, one day discovered he could be sucked into his computer and be forced to play games for the better of mankind or something. And each issue, a couple of issues, he would have to tackle a different game. Yeah, yeah. With the artist's interpretation of what that game might actually look like. So that's what we're going to look at the comic strip and look at the game and see how well they compare. One thing's worth noticing that what started off as a good fun adventure involving your favourite video games rapidly turned into mm. a US gold marketing campaign. Yes, the game of the week, always US gold. Yes, and of course being from the 80s it was a different time so corporal punishment was something you look forward to in your weekly comic. <laughs> right, so first game, this is Wizard of War. Um, this is a conversion of a Midway arcade game, I guess. It's um, yeah, I've never heard of it. So, and uh, released with a console six four by Commodore themselves in nineteen eighty three. Um, the artwork for this in the comic pretty good. Yeah, I think they've uh, done a really good job. Yeah, it's um, drawn by somebody called Ian Kennedy, who I always got confused back in the day with all of the phrase work. But yeah, no, he did do some two thousand AD work as well. I think. That's what he's mostly famous for. So yes, yeah, so, so nice, some nice depictions of dungeons and Bobby Patterson uh, getting uh, very close to death and losing his life. But um, anyway, let's have a look. Get ready. So, yeah, doesn't look a great deal like it does in the comic, no. but hey, <laughs> you know, that's fine, it's a game from 1980, then converted in 1983, so it's pretty basic. But what you do actually have here is a pretty fun sort of Berserk clone. I suppose it's like Berserk, isn't it? Yeah, I like how the sprites turn 90 degrees to save on memory. <laughs> <laughs> and animation. Yeah. They should have included that in the comics. So. <laughs> yes. <laughs> sort of rotate the, uh, the monsters actually in the panels. Yeah. Um, Bobby Patterson played all his games on the Commodore 64, didn't he? Yes, it appears to be the predominant format. Sometimes yeah. it's quite obviously a Commodore 64, sometimes it's a legally distinct 8-bit <laughs> looking computer. Yeah. And he did always spend a lot of time worrying about getting money to buy the latest game. But he should have had a Spectrum, because he could have just copied it. <laughs> yeah, I suppose so, but I don't think there was the message they were trying to put across in the 80s. No. <laughs> but buy our video games, and if you can't afford them, and it's a life, oh, life oh. or death scenario, just like there you that. Go. Now Bobby's dead. I have killed Bobby. Oh, I'm a multi-kill rampage. Yeah. <laughs> The interesting thing about the comic is Bobby spent most of the time living in terror. He was always <laughs> <laughs> scared he was going to die in the next game. <laughs> scared of his dad. <laughs> yes. Scared of not having enough money. <laughs> so it wasn't a great life being no, a computer warrior. No, it was a computer yeah. warrior. I would not recommend as, as a lifestyle choice. Yeah. And again, an odd way to sell games. It's like, this is the terrifying mm. experience. You're going to die. <laughs> You're all going to die horribly. Um, and games are supposed to be escapism. Uh, and I think Bobby spent his time actually escaping, you know, real death. And we're, whereas we're just fighting some very basic 8 bit sprites. Oh my oh god, my what god. the it's hell the is that? I think this is in the comic. This is that bunk thing in the comic. It's freaking out. If you have. And the wizard! Oh, the wizard's. Whoa, he's. The <laughs> it's just. It's oh, he's teleporting a little, all over the place. I'm just going to stand here and hope he goes away. You're using Call of Duty tactics. <laughs> yeah, camping. camping the oh, 
If you have epilepsy, look away now. <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't have epilepsy, you probably do now. <laughs> Double score dungeon. Mm. And I just it's... noticed there's like some kind of radar at the bottom of the yes. screen. Yes. I don't know what purpose it serves. Because you can see, can see the everything. see the entire screen. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's really is a little bit pointless. But I like it. It doesn't seem to be a time limit as well, so I probably could play this really safe and just camp in the camp corner. Here, yeah. Can you go through the warp tunnels? Oh, that's a good point. Let's have a try with that. Let's go and play in the warp tunnels. I like the yellow dinosaur. He's cool. Yep, you can play in the warp tunnels. Oh, Hurrah! I think you... Have you used it up? No, you can't use it again. Oh, so you can only use it once? I don't know, because there was a little line. There so. was, wasn't there? Yep, you yeah. can only use it once. So there we go. Single-use warp tunnel. Oh, it's oh, opened back. again. Okay. Oh, there's still one on the radar. Oh. Yeah, he's a, he, some maybe, maybe the radar's there, but some of them turn invisible. I want that super bug to come back again. Here he is. Oh, who oh. died? Who died? <laughs> Did I die? Did the bug die? My eyes died. <laughs> <laughs> I think he got him. I did. I got a bonus player as well. I'll keep the computer school lord warrior away. Yeah. Oh yeah, I don't know. I might, might actually see what the arcade game of this is like. Oh, okay. So that is surprisingly almost to what version is very close. Yeah, it's um, pretty spot on, really. Yeah, and you've got on this, you've got an AI second player. Yeah, and a little bit more colour. But yeah, otherwise it's yeah, pretty good. It's very authentic to the uh, arcade the Commodore 64 version. As well, I suppose you've got a 1980. 1980 arcade game running on 1983 Commodore 64. It's um, yeah, yeah, interesting. Yeah. So yes, yeah, to conclude, we have a sort of fun maze arena yeah. sort of uh, epilepsy fit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Super fun is awesome. Uh, and here's going. But yeah, Mr. War, that's sort of fun. Yeah, very early game, but would have been good in, in 83. Yeah. Right, next up we have the Great American Road Race from Activision, 1985. Can you guess what kind of game this is? <laughs> so the idea is you've got a cross-country road race from Los Angeles to, well, I suppose the West Coast, but uh, quite famously via Albuquerque oh, yeah. because the Computer Warriors... Uh, a couple of issues playing this game was really just a journey. Just level one. <laughs> just, just level one, just the journey to Albuquerque. And you're off. I can't remember this place. We've already looked at how to play this and I've already forgotten. Yeah, the game mostly seems to involve changing gears and not blowing up your engine. Yeah, the idea is you've got a what was it push up to accelerate yeah. and then let go let press go the button fire. to cat to, 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 to use the clutch to change gear and it's i oh, know so yeah button to accelerate then lift left off the button and press up to change gear like that That's right it. We're now you got it now we're motoring so yeah <laughs> still being overtaken, <laughs> still by, being everyone. overtaken by everyone even that <laughs> granny on a bike uh, here we go there we go we're really moving now Whoa! Oh. And Until then. <laughs> and Bobby Patterson seems to be completely preoccupied. And because I hadn't played this game back in the day, I really didn't understand why he was preoccupied about blowing his engine all the time. <laughs> and you can blow the engine quite spectacularly in this. And yeah. you actually have to push the car all the way to the next petrol station, which I've just missed. I jam in the buttons, so it's not fun. <laughs> no. But the art in this one is pretty good, actually. It made a good job of uh, making an exciting race. Yes, <laughs> out, out of this, <laughs> out, yeah. Out of a uh, gear-changing chore. <laughs> it would help if there was a gear indicator on the screen. Uh, <laughs> mm, that is weird. And there's a cactus there. Watch out for the cactus. Right. Ooh. Stunning graphics. <laughs> Um, 
in the artwork, all the characters have their names or nicknames written on the cards. Yes, yes. Quite cool. Like, because this was well before the days of game attacks, so, so everyone just called Bobby Bobby. <laughs> Not burning Bobby. <laughs> yeah, now he's burning Bobby. <laughs> I guess, was it Doom that kind of popularised game attacks? I don't know, I suppose it was just like the advent of online gaming. I yeah. suppose there was people who were uh, played the old... Um, I suppose things like play-by-mail games, I suppose. Yeah, probably might possibly. have even been the first time you used a, a nickname of things in, in a game. But play-by-mail games, that's, that's like... Wow! Yeah. Did you ever play a play-by-mail game? I never did. No, I never did. I don't think I have the patience for that. They were always advertised in the backs of magazines. Now ah, here we go. Right. Finally. Now <laughs> we're going. We do need to look for a petrol station because you're going oh, dangerous, really dangerously low on petrol. Oh. oh dear. Yeah, the more we play this, the more I am impressed with what they managed to pull off in the comic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This right. is a bit like Desert Bus, actually, isn't it? <laughs> oh, but I've gone past the petrol oh, station no. again! This it's is perhaps the early version of Desert Bus. And there's the Desert Bus, we just overtook the turquoise Desert Bus. <laughs> but yes, it, it runs the same sort of was. Desert Bus is Las Vegas to Phoenix, isn't it? Or, to, sure. or somewhere like Las Vegas to, to um, Tucson, yeah. Alright, this is our last right. chance for last gas. chance for gas. We could take it easy. Yep. Here it is. I don't... Yay! Yay! Fill her up! I think that's about as exciting as this game gets. It is, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I think if I'd been a reader of Eagle and I'd rushed out to buy it, I would be feeling a little bit... <laughs> a little bit pissed off. Yeah. <laughs> <by. laughs> <laughs> But then again, I think back in the day, if you bought a duffer, you sort of stuck with it, didn't you? Yeah, you, you had to endure it. Cause no returns. And you, well, and you, well unless you, doesn't. unless you've got a, uh, uh, unless you haven't been banned from boots. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, not really indicative of the gameplay. The comic is it? It's, no, it's, no. I think the comic uh, improved it significantly. Yes, it did. It made it look a lot more exciting. If you read the comic and then play Burnout. Um, paradise or something mm. like that you're probably going to be more on. so the comic bit... might have been like 30 years <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <it was laughs> too, too early <laughs> too early for burnout yeah, yeah. but uh, I think that's it and this this is proving really horrible and painful to play mm. we're reaching the city limits oh wow I, wonder if I might, act... might get a graphical change we might shall we hold on see if we get a graphical change I'm <laughs> actually just going to give up um I'm going to skip the gas station for the next one. Yeah, you don't need it. No, I've got half fast. a tank of fuel. Full packet of Sorry. Sorry? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I'm sorry. It's just not enough. <laughs> it's definitely not. not. <laughs> Final standings. Yeah. What? <laughs> well, East Side Eddie. Oh, look, the names are There's similar. Those are actually the names from in the oh, comic. Right. Keep Head Kevin's in the comic as ah, well. So I thought so. the comic had done that. But yeah. Actually, they'd taken them from the game. From the game. Move over Mary. Interesting. Jumpstart John. Right, next up we have Express Raider, and this is where US Gold starts to get involved. Um, in the comic strip at this point, Bobby Patterson has already become the computer warrior at the mm. end of the first run of uh, comic strips, and uh, because it was such a good comic strip, they brought him back for some more. He didn't want to come back, <laughs> no. so he smashed his computer up with a cricket bat, and but then was told he would actually have, still have to compete. Yeah. Um, and the way they managed to get Bobby's attention was through... TV screens in a rental <laughs> shop not. saying play Express Raider. <laughs> play it now or die. <laughs> Which um, is before email, obviously, so that's how people used to communicate. <laughs> <laughs> Random messages and shop windows. So next time you're walking past Radio Rentals, <laughs> watch out for that, that sign that says buy the latest US gold oh. game or die. <laughs> <laughs> so what he does, he actually goes to the arcade um, and again, a piece of... Uh, Top tier marketing. Oh my gosh, it's an arcade conversion. We can go and play it in the arcades and get good. Yeah. So that's what Bobby did. So uh, here we go, Express Raider. Get ready. That's a very, very turquoise <laughs> tra train. Yep. 
This looks like two bums having a fight next to the railway. <laughs> um, one of them's now getting defeated by cats. <laughs> he crawls around on the floor <laughs> looking for loose change. <laughs> I don't remember this from the comic. <laughs> <laughs> no, I <it> didn't. <laughs> All right, uh, on the roof. On the roof. There's another homeless person he's kicking. Oi. Ooh, oh, dodge the sign. Oh, and get across before the bomb goes off. <laughs> Some wino just chucking bottles at me. And repeatedly mm. kicking him in the knee. <laughs> Funny how his chair disappears as well. Yeah. Oh, uh, it's another. I suppose. What, do, you, do you know what? Do you still have the idea of this game to actually get to the end? I think you have to capture the train, don't you? So. Onto oh the yeah, now, onto the coal you? truck, and it's gonna be a man with a stick, I think. Oh, he's got, oh, he's a shotgun, got a gun, which fires shurikin by the looks of it. Excellent. Eight-bit buckshot looks like yeah. shurikin. <laughs> then relying on the <laughs> kick to the stomach. You can't get really close enough to him. Oof! It's not looking good for Bobby. Oh dear. oh dear, Bobby's died. Time up. Where do we go back to? The same car, I suppose. Yes. Oh yeah, it's pretty good. And again, the the artwork on this one is surprisingly good. Yeah. Uh, again, um, the arcade game of this, oof, poo, um, is a um, obviously Data East arcade game. How do you duck twice? You can't. You're seems to be to... two levels of ducking here. You had it when you were crawling. There you go. But you can't move when you're in that position. So you've got <laughs> oh, he's ducking as well now. That's... I'm going to try jumping the shotguns. Yeah. Um, oh, game over. Game Let's over. try again. So, we're continuing. What were we saying? We were talking about... Oh, yeah, the arcade Fun game. Types. Yeah, the arcade game. So, the arcade game was released about the same time as Konami's Iron Horse. which must have been some kind of Western train-based oh, yeah. revival going on in the... Japanese arcades back in 1980, whenever. Yeah, and the Capcom wasn't much longer, was it? The uh, one you covered last week. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, on um, Gunsmoke. Gunsmoke. Yeah. So, yeah, it's definitely an 80s cowboy revival in the arcades yeah. in Japan. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> it looks like he's sitting in a director's chair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Got him. Oh, the energy bar might be the enemies, not yours. It's it's a shared energy oh. bar, I think. When I kick, it goes up. When yeah. I kick, it goes down. Oh. Right, so see if we can jump over this shotgun. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Three shotgun hits and you're dead. I can't quite reach. <laughs> now you've got him. Uh, time up. Time up. Eagle Comics are now owned by Rebellion, I guess, who bought pretty much all of everything for my PC. I'm guessing yeah. they pretty much own all of uh, British comics from the 80s, which is a good thing. I guess. Yeah. Um, so maybe one day they'll re-release Computer Warrior. I bet it was going to be a licensing nightmare. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, who even owns US Gold or all those games anymore? Well, yeah. Yeah. Who knows. Hey, we've done hey. Shotgun Guy. But uh, perhaps Rebellion could bring him back because they obviously make their own games as well. That's a good point. So you could have Bobby Patterson in... Um, the Zombie Star Army. Zombie Army, yeah. That would yeah. be actually a really good comic. <laughs> I think there might have been a comic of it. And he could be in Sniper Elite, I think they do. Don't yeah, they? yeah. yeah. Um, they've done a few other games. What was the Strange Brigade, I think, they did. Was that them? I don't know. That would probably be quite a good comic. But he would just have to wait like two years between games. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, two weeks. Well, they could just do a whole graphic novel based on it, but with a lot yeah. of cats in it. Yeah. But now he's like a 50 year old guy in his game shed. <laughs> 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 I still have to play these bloody games. <laughs> it's been 40 years. Why won't they leave me alone? Yeah. The Skull Lord's popping up in his stupid Call of Duty <laughs> samurai skin. Oh! Oh, wow, cool. Oh, dear. <laughs> that was cool for a second. For I, a second. I, I presume there's a. a, a uh, 
a gun. There's not really a gun sight on the screen. But... No, you can see where your bullets are hitting, but it's pretty random. This is in the comic as well. This bit. More people throwing random items at you. I don't think I've hit anybody yet. Oh, there was a hit. I've only got four seconds left to kill them all. Oh dear. Game, Game over. over. So yeah, Express Raider. That's that's. Um, uh, it's good but tough. In fact, let's let's just let's have, have just have a quick look at the arcade version as a comparison. Oh wow, this is quite a big difference. Yeah, <laughs> massive difference, isn't it? So much more detail. Yeah. Hit the coyotes. Are they coyotes? They're, they're uh, not random alley cats. They, they <laughs> still look like cats rather than yeah. dogs, though, don't they? But yeah, there's a lot more definition on, on the game here. Yeah, I and suppose the Commodore 64 version looks okay. <laughs> it seems a lot faster this version yeah, as well. It so. does. Oh, it's oh, a boxy it's sitting box. on the wino. It's still Not a wino though. though. Yeah. <laughs> Mind you, having said that, but he's recognisable in the Commodore 64 version. Oh yeah. It's the same wino. <laughs> But yeah, oh, you can the, do some the flying kicks. Combat and stuff. is a lot more fluid in this. Oh I mean, wow. wow, yeah, that's yeah, so you much. You can really better. to power through. Oh, shovel man, the shovel <laughs> knight. <laughs> Brilliant, excellent. Okay, well done. Yeah, I suppose it's probably the best you could do with the Commodore 64 at the time, <laughs> yeah. but um, yeah. Right, so next up we have Gauntlets. Again, US Gold had the license for this and boy did they want everyone to know it. <laughs> yeah. Gauntlet was an arcade legend at the time. Yes, it was. Um, you couldn't get near the machines the year it was released. No, was very, out. very popular. So yeah, being Gauntlet, you get to choose, well, obviously on the Commodore 64 you're going to have two players rather than four, but mm. um, we're only going to play it one player, um, and choose your character. And this brings up the thing in the comic strip, you actually had in later issues a female called Beverly, I think oh, her I name was? I can't remember her name. Um, but she was obviously going to be Valkyrie, oh, Yeah. Um, whereas I think the uh, villain of the piece... Um, I can't remember, his name Gummer something? Um, I don't know. Yeah, I think his name was Gummer. was stabbing guy. Yeah, so. was was uh, Merlin and uh, Bobby Patterson was Thor. I've no idea who, who the, the elf was. No. Um, but they did have recurring characters, didn't they? they yes, come back yes. Recurring characters. Yeah. And Gummer was always the uh, the bad guy. <laughs> Gummer stole the food! <laughs> yeah. I think he played with the girl in sidearms as well, didn't he? He played partnered I think so. with um, the... the Female player. Yeah. So it was a bit ahead of its time there. And yeah, you had female players, and of course she was always gamers. being treated as, oh, you can't play because you're a girl. Yeah, and so, you're like, yes, yeah. I am, and I'm better than you. And she was. So yeah. So some things never change. No, <laughs> no. Before you know it, Bevan will be uh, being trolled by Gum on Twitter in the modern age. <laughs> so. Level one has loaded. Um, we were having a discussion before we played this, so we seem to remember that. The Commodore 64 version loaded in levels of batches of 10. Um, maybe the Spectrum version does as well. Yeah, I can't remember if it was one level at a time, but um, they certainly loaded very quickly if it was. So mm. It wasn't a terrible chore having multi-load. And our Valkyrie, look, to me, looks a bit like a dinner lady. <laughs> yeah, and she looks to me like Finn from Adventure Time <laughs> when you look at her face on. But. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of course, being Gauntlet, there's no m real music apart from in between, and it's yeah. all down the, the sound effects and that. And the yelps. But it's 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 not a bad approximation yeah. of Gauntlet. It's, it's it runs very smoothly, and it's obviously got a lot of them sprites on the screen at one time. So yeah, that's good. I do think the comic was based more on the arcade version. Yeah. Because obviously the arcade sprites had a lot more detail in them than the mm. Commodore 64 version, but. And of course, it was always a, a multiplayer game. You don't get the full gauntlet effect if you're playing it solo. No, you don't. No, you really got to be playing it well, ideally with four players. Yeah. So, as a comparison, here's a quick look at the uh, arcade version. So yes, gauntlet um, in the arcade, as we said, it is a lot more detailed. Um, 
One thing I we totally forgot to mention is the digitized digitized voice in the arcade version obviously isn't in the home versions and yeah. obviously isn't in the comic strip either. No, it's just they could have had that as like a, oh, like a little plug-in thing on the pages or something. Yeah. A little sound bite thing. That would have only made the issue like probably seventy pounds. <laughs> But yeah, this, I mean, the Commodore 64 version isn't bad. I'm, I'm actually surprised how detailed this is now I've been playing the Commodore 64 version. Yeah, I think you've forgotten how much uh, detail yeah. there is on it. But yeah, this isn't a bad version of it. But it's funny how um, this was such a really big deal, wasn't it? Mm, Gauntlet yeah. was a big deal, as you said, in the arcades. Um, I think it was a big Christmas game, wasn't it? Yes, yes, Christmas '87. It seemed to be a huge build-up. Yeah, Christmas '86. Might have been a yeah. 87, yeah, I think it was, I think Outrun was the big game of Christmas '87. I think again, US Gold. Yeah. I think they had number the big Christmas games each year, every year, uh, at least until I think Ocean broke it with Robocop. <laughs> And this was a, a good game for the comics. Obviously, you had the other characters who we mentioned. Yeah, and yeah, with the, the Bev and And Gunner. the artists could really make the most of it because you actually had identifiable monsters and things. Yes, to draw. Again, as I say, yeah. the thing based on the arcade version, judging by the drawings. But yeah, it was a good approximation of Gauntlet um, for, for a uh, weekly comic strip. And I hadn't realised how much of uh, Computer Warrior I missed. I only read... Um, maybe five or six games of stories for those, but it actually ran for quite a long it time. It did. The first one was the first series, for want of a better word, was ten games. Hmm. He had to complete ten games to rescue his daft mate from the Forbidden Zone or whatever it was called, <laughs> and then he did that. And then the Computer Warrior popped up again in his cod skin and um, demanded <laughs> he play ten more games to um, seal some kind of ancient evil. I don't know why you'd have to play eight bit computer games to <laughs> yeah. seal an ancient evil i'm really not sure how that works but apparently it did it did or else we wouldn't be here now <laughs> we didn't yes bobby patterson <laughs> must have actually succeeded yeah let's see i would like to read the full lot so uh rebellion get it re-released if anybody out there actually has scans of all of it could you just please just stick them up on google drive or something for us and send me the link <laughs> that'd be nice in fact, if somebody scanned all of the Eagle comics from the 80s, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all 300 and something of them. But yeah, they only, I, wasn't, I wasn't too too upset with this as a version of Gauntlet back in the day. Yeah, I would have been pretty happy with this. Um, yeah, I had the Spectrum version and I, I do remember enjoying it and spending quite a bit of time on it. So yeah, it's a, a good version of Gauntlet and the comic strip pretty much covers Gauntlet. Yeah. Pretty well there. Right, so there were four games that were immortalised in comic book form for uh, Eagle Comics Computer Warrior there. Um, yeah, and revisiting this, I've actually changed my mind on it. I remember always thinking that the art was a terrible representation of the game, and, and they always got it wrong, but I think it's actually the other way around. I'm, I'm impressed with how good they made some of these early games look. Yes, yes, especially Wizard of War. That's actually a really, really well-drawn, well-presented comic strip for such a really basic game. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there were a few they got wrong, but I think on the whole, they did a great job of yeah. promoting these games. Yeah, definitely. And US God were probably very happy with the later ones, even though it did sort of go a bit tits up with stuff like Sidearms and Bionic Commando. Yeah. <laughs> Which we didn't cover, maybe another time. If you'd like to see us cover things like Bionic Commander and Sidearms on the Commons of Explore while talking about 80s comic strips, <laughs> comment below. Yeah, subscribe or naff off!